Hello friends, how are you? Long time uh, since I posted a new video uh, and I really wanted. I, I like to make videos and uh, many people was asking me to upload more and more new videos but it uh, was impossible for me until now because uh, we were moving our factory from one place to a new one. Now we have new facilities at AMO, uh, a big factory. Now I have a new office uh, where I work very comfortable with more space so i decided to to do again the videos that i like it talking about many things about my other modeling not only about techniques you know that i like to talk about uh, about contests about concepts and i will try to do more in in the next months and next weeks i hope to start the new series videos i wanted to talk about something totally new that uh, that i really love it because it's one of my favorite subjects uh, and it is the yes the T34 122 from Rayfield. It's a fantastic new kit, and I wanted to explain you eight important things that you must know before you buy this uh, vehicle, this kit. Because um, in fact, there are really few information about it. Uh, it's difficult to find something that could be useful to to to. To decide how to paint it or what to do with it. In fact, uh, until now I was very confused even myself. That is my one of my favorite subjects. So this is why I was researching in internet and trying to discover something to help you to make your model. So if you are interested in this new kit from Rayfield, you must check this video to understand what the hell is that. So let's go. Okay, the first thing that you must know about this vehicle is that the real name is not the T34122. This is the western name that we give to it, but the real name is Abu Sabal T122. This is the real name because uh, this tank was produced in Abu Sabal factories. That is a city near or a neighborhood near uh, El Cairo, in the north of El Cairo. Abu Sabal is an area where the Egyptian made many tanks, many conversions, and actually they even produce tanks uh, or sort of guns like the D-30 or many anti-aircraft systems and many others. But this tank was produced entirely in Abu Sabal factories. This is why the real name is Abu Sabal T-122. Number two, this tank was produced between 19. 56 to 1973. Yes, more or less the Yom Kippur War end. Uh, this means that this was produced during many years using like a base the T3485 tank. Probably they used uh, obsolete or, or damaged uh, T34 from the different battles and they used it to construct and to place the, the big gun, the D30 uh, gun over this uh, chassis. So this is something interesting to keep in mind if you want to create your own version with different features, different wheels, um, because it can be possible. Number three, only 30 tanks like this was made. Only 30, three zero, yes. A really a small quantity if we compare, for example, with the T-54, T-55, T-62, uh, where the, the Egyptian used um, a thousand of them, but in comparison with those, uh, this tank was exceptional. No? So this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, this tank is very special, because it's unique. Number four, even you think that, uh, no, not only you, me too, I was thinking that this is artillery tank, is not uh, true that, uh, that thing. In fact, that, uh, that tank was used mainly for anti-tank purposes or like a tank destroyer. It was used to defend a kind of position, for example, like the SU-152 tank, anti-tank gun that was used also like a bunker no, to defend um, the, the Egyptian strategic points against the, the IDF. Probably, if this tank was used in, uh, during the Yom Kippur, it was probably used in the other side of the channel, I mean in the El Cairo channel, in the Egyptian side of the channel to defend 
some strategic position and probably it never crossed to the other side of the channel but I have no idea how it was used during the previous wars in, in, in Egypt number five this tank was operated by six persons the driver the commander the gunner and three loaders three loaders that needed to put the, uh, the sails into the gun uh, probably was a very complex operation this uh, turret only uh, uh, carried uh, around 24 cells that is not a lot but enough for a small battle and another interesting thing that i was reading about the turret is that you can see that the turret have uh, many hatches around the turret around the um, the upper area of the turret and this was made for two reasons one is for ventilation the smoke uh, that uh, was uh, inside the the turret compartment was a lot so they needed to open the hatches to help to ventilate the interior from the smoke but the other reason is that was used also like a kind of um, protection against the enemy infantry in case that the enemy infant infantry was attacking the the, the tank they opened the hatches and they used it to shoot the, the personal uh, weapons against them. So this is the, the reason of so many hatches around the turret. Number six, only 12 of those tanks survived to 1973. Only 12. And they were used until the 18th, uh, 1980 more or less. Many of those were used for artillery purposes, for training, and also for um, targets. Obviously, uh, this vehicle after uh, Yom Kippur War, it was totally obsolete, uh, so it was not necessary to, to preserve. No? Fortunately, around two of those tanks survived. One is in USA, I don't know exactly where, probably someone can add in the comments in this video. The other, I think, in England, I am not sure, but two survived. Probably there are another one in Israel, maybe someone can confirm, but uh, not too much. So that's all about this vehicle, a pity. Number seven, and this is not about the historic aspects, but about the kit itself. The mantle of this tank is made in a kind of rubber, white rubber, like you can see, it's very nice, very, very nice detail. And when I saw for the first time, I thought, okay, fantastic. So I can put my gun in, in different position and different elevation up and down in the rubber uh, mantle cover. But I was wrong. When I glue it and I place everything in position, the gun barrel inside the mantlet, I find it that it cannot move. Maybe just a little, few millimeters up and down, and that's all. So you are thinking about to put a, a kind of artillery position or something like that, forget it, it's impossible. So this must be the, the position of the gun barrel. Number eight, this is a very positive things, uh, thing about Rayfield, uh, and this is why I want to include in this list. Rayfield included a huge range of uh, variation uh, in a way that you can personalize your tank. If we understand what I said before, that this tank was used during many years and was made using different T-34s. And as you know, Egypt uh, used uh, the T-34 uh, T3485 in multiple versions with different wheels and different features so this is something that can help us to make our model more attractive for example the kit includes the uh, spider wheels not too many but enough to make um, something interesting but also the other two types of wheels the early type from the second world war that is completely flat with no no details or the starfish wheel um, typical from the T55 so you can use this, you can use this, or combinate between them. But also there are another kind of details uh, that make your model more attractive. For example, uh, different kind of map wars or fenders with different details, uh, different frontal um, parts. I don't know the exact name of this, but it's just what is right here. And another beautiful detail for beginners or modelers who want to start uh, by constructing a kit uh, simple and nice that is for example this that is the fan uh, grills the fan cover that uh, rayfield 
allow you to choose one of, of those. One with the grills incorporated in the plastic, just ready for painting. But if you want more railings, you can use this and add the photo edge that the ray fill includes in the kit. So I think that is perfect for, for modelers who are starting in this hobby uh, and they want to create something really attractive. From my side, I, I must say that I am so happy with this kit, I am enjoying a lot, I need to finish. Uh, ah, and another detail that I forget it, the covers for the south pipes. I use it this version, that is a kind of post-war version. Anyway, the kit is super, it's fantastic, uh, very nice detail, I am, I am willing to paint it as soon as possible. Uh, but I hope you find uh, useful this information that I provide you in case that you want to do something different because I was very confused in the, in the beginning about, about this vehicle. I was not sure if it was a post-war tank or not or if it can be used in Yom Kippur or not. So now, since that information is a bit more clear, of course, if you find more information, please include in the comments. Uh, that will be welcome for all of us. But if nobody can find more information, just paint it. That's all, my friend. Thank you very much for staying here one more time. And see you in the next video. Bye, my friends. Bye-bye for now.